Welcome back to Healthy Pets, Healthy People, Dr. Courtney. Good morning, Dr. Ed. It's so nice to be invited back. Well, I'm always a pleasure to have you, and you've been so kind and so generous with your time, Dr. Courtney, in helping to educate our audience on this virus and, and your approach to, to taking care of the virus or preventing the virus. On our last show, and I'd like to continue from that, we were just starting to talk about exosomes and how this could apply to controlling this virus. Yeah, I uh, I wanted to add one thing to what you were just saying. That I followed you completely with uh, the fact that flu wipes out so many people a year. What's unique about COVID nineteen that makes it scarier than the regular flu is that in this COVID nineteen there is a phenomenon whereby the immune system gets engaged so uh, forcefully that it completely attacks the lungs, and we get a condition known as ARDS. This is a acute respiratory distress syndrome. On an x-ray, we call it a whiteout. This does not happen in any of the previous flus that we know of. And, and so, I understand that, Dr. Corney, but that's not universal. That's only impacting certain people with immune deficiencies uh, or, or s- certain criteria. Exactly. So it, Exactly. Exactly. So those who have the comorbid conditions are in an extra bit of panic now because they are at risk of getting this very unique phenomenon that could occur in them. And if that happens, by the way, once this moves to ARDS, these patients are very rarely saved. So um, just for that reason alone, it's what makes COVID-19 so unique and so special. Uh, I have been, since my first show with you, Ed, talking about ways that the public can take charge. And uh, because I got upset from the first day I've heard Fauci and Birch tell us, which, by the way, was 100 percent correct, that self-isolation, self-distancing and hygiene were a way to prevent this disease from spreading. I actually believe that to be a completely... um, Uh, correct and accurate way to deal with this. But I've always been in the mindset that there's more to do, and especially in this case, more to do than sitting in a room and keeping your hands clean. And and, and I would agree with you. And the fact that some of these measures should have been common practice on our daily basis our whole lives. And, and, you know, we sometimes ignore those those basic hygiene principles. The interesting thing here, though, the way I look at this, Dr. Courtney, is that we should have isolated the people that were susceptible to this, not the whole world. Uh, fair enough comment. Uh, we are, uh, if the most recent reports are accurate, have hit at least the plateau. Um, we did it this way. Uh, I think you you were right in uh, your original statement. Uh, but, however, we are where we are. And we'll need to proceed where we're going to proceed. Um, I've been talking about hand washing and hygiene, but I've added to the mix the ability for a patient to take charge of themselves through the use of oral vitamin C and high-dose intravenous vitamin C. And those are on previous shows. By the way, all those shows are on my website on the opening page. So if you missed them, for the listeners of me today and you want to go out and find more about Rather than us covering that territory again, Ed, I just would like to send patients or listeners to my website at CourtneyMedical.com. On the opening page, there are now three parts, our three previous shows on what to do. Today is the fourth show, and I believe there's something very exciting right now on the horizon I just have to bring to our listeners. I've got to bring this message to you because a brand-new proactive treatment is ready to go, and this would be the infusion of something called IV amniotic nanomatrix. I know that's a mouthful, but the whole phrase really does um, require to be used because it has to be the entire amniotic nanomatrix. Now, let's find out why. Okay, Ed? So this is taken from amniotic fluid, like the stem cells and the exosomes? The fact that uh, my exosomes, 
which I've been using now for many, many months, come from Amnion is uh, absolutely uh, been part and parcel of why, in, se- in a sense, I've been treating with uh, exosomes now for, for all these months, since July of 2019. But we have now found out something brand new, especially in the world of COVID-19. And I just got to bring this message to you because I believe we're about ready to make an announcement I think is going to shake the very earth we stand on. So let's take it back to how this comes about. And in order to understand where we are or where we're headed, uh, we have we referred to two studies that were done in Wuhan, China. You've heard Wuhan before, have you not? Yeah, it's, I think we all have by yeah. now. Okay, yeah. It's where it all began. Dr. Courtney, and, uh, we're going we're gonna to need to take a, a break here before you get into the, the crust of this. So if you can just hold your thought there, we need to take a commercial break here, hear a word from our wonderful sponsors, and then we're going to go into this this new uh, procedure, protocol that, that you're going to talk about. Our number here, if you have questions for Dr. Courtney, 844-302-1250, 844 Gary will put you in the queue, and we'll get to you as soon as we can. We'll be back here in a moment at Healthy Pets, Healthy People with Dr. Dennis Courtney talking about COVID-19. There is a solution to your health challenge and one that will allow you to avoid both surgery and prescription medications. Take the time to find out more about the fascinating and miraculous world of stem cells. You are invited to attend a free seminar. Reserve your seat now by calling 724-888-3088. That's 724-888-3088. 3088. Become empowered with Dr. Courtney. Call today, 724-888-3088. Tell them Dr. Ed sent you. We're back at Healthy Pets, Healthy People with Dr. Dennis Courtney. Our number, 844-302-1250. Dr. Courtney, please pick up on the conversation about the Amnio Nano Matrix. Okay. So as I was saying just before we cut to a break, um, based on two studies that came out of Wuhan, China, which is where this whole COVID-19 began, uh, one study, very minimal number, but there were nine women in that study. These were all pregnant women. They were all afflicted with COVID-19, and they were very ill, as a matter of fact. And uh, when it came time to deliver their children, they actually delivered them by C-section, and all nine children were COVID negative. And this was a very interesting phenomenon. They really expected the babies to be ill. They were not. A second study was done. This study was also done in Wuhan, China. It involved 33 women. And also, each of these women was afflicted with COVID-19. They delivered their babies. And 31 of the 33 were COVID negative. Three of them turned out to become COVID positive, but upon further looking, they found that the amniotic fluid and the umbilical cord blood was COVID negative, and they uh, chalked up the three cases to being exposed to COVID after birth. This means then and it's now accepted by the obstetric and gynecological community that it is impossible for COVID-19 to survive in an amnion environment, which is a major league thing to learn. The well, virus. no one's talking about this. This is the first time hearing of this, and, and I'll, I'll bet this is the you, you being the first one to talk about it on, on this well, on this program. I, I can't help but scream this from the rooftops. This is a major find, and I see, I see uh, uh, people coming on the TV, and they're women who are pregnant, and nothing's being mentioned uh, about this fact. And so I have to reiterate again that the virus cannot survive in an amnion environment. Now remember, I've been using exosomes that are derived from that amnion environment. So you can see immediately there's an interest here. There's a connection here. So let's put that on the shelf for the moment and say that amnion is a safe place 
and what grows in there and what goes on in there is protective. So that should take the fears away from a lot of women who are, who are pregnant at, during this period. Well, at least it should take it away from the fact that their child, even if they're COVID positive, their child will not be born COVID positive. However, the protections against contracting the disease have to be used from the moment of delivery. But up until delivery, there is no concern whatsoever with these children contracting the disease. That's a very big statement that's now understood by all obstetricians and gynecologists in the world, I might add. Now, let's fast forward to the next component. The FDA was formed in 1938 through an act called the FDNC, the Federal Drug and Cosmetic Act. Part 564 of the act deals with pandemics because there's a whole set of rules that go into play with pandemics. Now, you understand that there has been no pandemic ever since our last one of 1917, and these rules were devised for the possibility of a pandemic should it ever occur. In 2004, they added one additional item to Part 564 dealing with what is referred to as EUA, and that stands for Emergency uh, Emergency Use Authorization. And what this is is the FDA, during a pandemic only, is allowed to permit the use of untested uh, treatments if they deem it to be helpful and beneficial in the pandemic. So whereas something would always take many, many months, uh, sometimes years, to pass muster with the FDA for them to approve it, during a pandemic, the FDA has the sole ability to grant EUA status to whatever they want to grant it to And I can tell you that our product is currently being evaluated by the FDA, and I hope to have good things to say within the next week. But this, of course, begs the issue about what has this product been able to demonstrate? So the people in Miami, which is where Organicel is located, went and took their product, their Amnion product, and they sent it off to a lab where they're in vitro now, we're growing COVID-19 in a Petri dish. And they injected the um, amniotic nano matrix of that product into the Petri dish, and the virus was rendered helpless within moments. Of course, remember I said you can't kill a virus because a virus really isn't alive, but it rendered the virus completely unable to provoke any sort of a response in terms of a disease. And that is when we knew that our product was able to take on the virus if it were to be administered in patients. And it's for that very reason that the FDA received an application from Organicel, and the FDA is currently going through. I mean, the lawyers are talking, uh, and within the next week, What is hoped to occur is that um, the product from Organicel, which is an an amniotic nanomatrix product, will be getting this EUA status, and it will be able to be used to treat COVID-19 prophylactically. So prophylactically means before you, you have the disease. Now, in actuality, whenever this gets approved from the FDA, it's being applied for for both A, prophylaxis, and B, actually treating people with COVID-19. You know, now, I, me- I know from you uh, about stem cells and exosomes. You know, my audience has been educated by you on the on those topics. Sometimes, and I know this is not the case for for exosomes. But sometimes those things that occur in the petri dish don't translate into the into the human the same way. Uh, would you agree with that? Absolutely, uh, I would agree that uh, this would have to be at any other time other than the pandemic. This assumption uh, that we've now jumped to 
is a jump you're just not allowed to take um, and, and get approval. You have to be tested. Uh, the product has to be tested. But we're in a different set of times. We're under pandemic rules, and the FDA is allowed to grant EUA status, emergency use authorization, and it is going to be granting it and get ready, public, because you now have the opportunity to take, especially if you are uh, compromised, if you are elderly, if you have comorbid conditions and you're sitting around in your room at home in clean hands, you can actually take charge. And I believe this is going to be the appropriate way to prophylax yourself and give yourself an advantage that heretofore you've been told you don't have. Now, this is an so oral administration. This is IV administration in your office, for example. No, well, the FDA is only um, looking at this to be given by IV infusion. So it won't be given orally. It will only be given by IV and whether or not it's in a hospital setting, which I won't have anything to do with. That that will happen in the various hospitals throughout the country. But in the community setting where people are trying to do prophylaxis to avoid COVID-19, this now is going to be the next the next frontier that's going to allow the public to actually take charge in a way that I didn't even know was possible. This is brand new, all based on that study from China and the fact that the in vitro studies that were done appear very positive. And remember, this product is completely safe. I've already been using the product since July, and I've used it by infusion in hundreds of cases, no, no injury is something that we have to worry about as a result of utilizing this product. So I don't have to worry about the harm. I'm already doing IVs. I just have never done it for um, COVID-19 prophylaxis. And this is now right around the corner. And I believe the public needs to know about it. And we brought it to their attention today. Yeah, we absolutely have. So prophylactic means that you want to use that as a preventative. An example would be if you have a mitral valve prolapse and you're going to have some, some a bad cut or you're going to have some dental procedure done or some surgery, you're going to go on an antibiotic before you ever do those procedures. This is the same thing that you're talking about here. Well, certainly if you have a comorbid condition like you just described, these people are very vulnerable to having the worst outcomes if they should ever get COVID-19 because of that attack the immune system can play on the lung. This is devastating, and quite honestly, it's terminal and lethal in most cases. Is that because but, of, an, uh, of a hypercytokine response? Is that what's causing that the damage in the you lungs? You actually use the right term. It is because of the cytokines and chemokines that are released by the immune system being ramped up for some reason, the fever pitch. And it literally digests the lungs, destroys the lungs, and it's almost irretrievable. Once that begins, the patient uh, literally is destined to succumb and expire because of that ARDS picture that gets presented. And that's so, why some ventilator patients aren't surviving because the damage from those cytokines is not exactly. reversible. If they, if they develop an ARA, ARD rather than just a pneumonia. A pneumonia they can treat. ARDS is virtually uh, untreatable and will lead to the demise of the poor patient. And it's for that reason why they're now sheltered in place, keeping their hands clean. And I'm trying to get the message out that there's much more that can be done to take charge here. And this one is about to become a reality once these final issues get ironed out with the FDA. So and that's why you're I'm on the show, Dr. To... Courtney. We need to we need to cut for a break right now. We'll be back with a word from our sponsors to continue this dialogue of education. We are back with Dr. Dennis Courtney talking about a protocol that can be a preventative to this virus entering our body and, and disrupting our lives and disrupting our health. Dr. Courtney, there's a lot of use, and, and it's kind of experimental right now, of hydrochloro, uh, hydrochloroquine and the combination of that and a Z-Pak, which is an antibacteria. 
So we know that hydrochloroquine is an anti-inflammatory, so it's reducing those cytokines kinds, uh, response in the body. But what you're talking about is something totally different. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the, the uh, hydroxychloroquine and z combination is to be used if you have the disease. And it is going to get its fair testing, and I believe it's going to show itself to be a wonderful treatment. But in order to take it for now, you already have to have a disease, and it's administered in a hospital setting. The treatment I'm talking about today is to prevent the disease. And this is where I believe the proactive uh, mentality of our, of our citizens is, hey, what can I do? And isn't there something more other than sitting around keeping my hands clean? And so I bring this message to you saying this is now available. It has been available. It's just we only found recently that is absolutely able, we believe, to work in the COVID-19 environment. Now, I want to mention two other things before we lose our time factor uh, here, Ed. One is what is intended by Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks is that ultimately we acquire what's known as herd immunity. Have you heard that term before, Ed? Did oh, absolutely. We talk about it often here. And, in fact, that's what Sweden has done. Sweden didn't do what the rest of the world did or what the United States did. They, they isolated the people that were at risk, and they let everybody else – deal with this virus in order to develop that herd immunity you know we, we mm, did we exactly. didn't do that uh and maybe no. that's the push a mandated vaccine which which i hope doesn't happen because i'll be fighting that uh, tooth and nail but anyway <laughs> back back to back to uh your comment here and then we have a caller yeah, so, as soon as we can take that caller in a minute here all right so this herd immunity issue do you understand that the way this ultimately is to shake out is when they we're all done and we're allowed to go back to our lives, it's expected that we're going to have to be exposed to the, those that walk out of this claim and don't have any COVID-19. We're expected to contract the COVID-19 from the herd and then once contracted, develop our own antibodies to protect ourselves. True immunity, so, in other words. Yeah, true immunity. So this is a little scary to think that what we're going to rely on for those people who have those core morbid conditions is that ultimately you really are going to have to contract the disease anyway to get the immunity that is going to be conferred upon you. And who's to say we don't have any idea of how um, difficult or how onerous that uh, exposure to COVID-19 is going to be. We have no idea. So here's an opportunity to take charge to prevent you from ever getting uh, this disorder by allowing you to protect yourself via this Amnion product, which I think is going to uh, set medicine on its ears. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to being involved at the front of the line here because I've already been using this product anyway. We're just waiting for that uh, FDA approval to take this out in the marketplace and advertise it as such. All right, uh, Dr. Courtney, yeah. let's, let's take this phone call. And I just disconnected Dr. Courtney, uh, Gary. Uh, Dr. Courtney, we will get you back. Um, we evidently didn't lock in that that call, so Dr. Courtney's going to is offline right now. We'll get him back. Hi, uh, Beverly. Welcome. Hello. Is this how my sister? Is this my sister, this Beverly? Is, this is your sister. Hey. This is your sister. How are you today? <laughs> Good. I'm doing well. Good. Um. Yeah. So, well, I do have a question for Dr. Courtney. Okay, we're going to get him this. back, but but why, okay. why don't you pose that question right now? So we. Okay. So my question is his vitamin C IV is prophylactic my question is would he take the new procedure over the vitamin c saying that the new procedure is would be better than the vitamin c iv okay um we're, we're in a process again that's a that's actually a wonderful question um let, let's see if we can get him back online here i i think he's yeah. back 
Gary, I apologize for all this, but a little technical difficulty here today. Let me see if I can get Dr. Courtney back online here. Are we good to go? Dr. Courtney, are you back? I am back. Okay, sorry. Somebody hit the switch. My, my sister Beverly called in. Bev, if you want to call back in again, go ahead and do that. But she posed a wonderful question, and you know my sister well. The, she yeah. she said that you offer in your office, and you've talked about it on the show before, IV administration of vitamin C. We know how important that is and how it produces hydrogen peroxide in the cell. Her question was actually, sh would you pr choose this new procedure you're talking about with the with the uh, amniotic fluid, the the exosomes IV over the administration of IV vitamin C? Um, at this time. It has such promise. It appears as though it's going to be able, head over heels, to do a better job than the vitamin C. And so I say that for those who are vulnerable with the comorbid conditions, this uh, matrix, this amnion matrix, would supersede vitamin C. It could also be in combination with, I understand that, but uh, I believe the fact that this is disproven to be inconsistent with live COVID-19 virus is if it works out in vivo as it did in vitro, and I understand that that, that that could be a stretch, but everything points to the fact that the amnion is so powerful that it very well should lead to what we're claiming that we think should happen. And so I'm saying IV vitamin C versus this, if you are really ill, this is the one you need to be thinking about. You know, okay? Dr. Courtney, I, I'm online all the time looking at this stuff and seeing some of the uh, comments that are being made by people and, and some of the what the medical people are saying and what science is saying. You're the only person I've heard talk about this. Why is that? Well, first of all, um, you understand there are companies out there who actually do have exosome products not just Organicell, other companies, but the uniqueness of this product allows me to do what I think the other companies can't. And that is when you harvest the exosomes, the other companies harvest the exosomes alone. And then sometimes they culture them, which would be terrible. We would want them to be cultured. So uh, one of the very points I wanted to make sure I ended with, you've now led me to talk about, which is the criteria for any product to be used in this manner are, number one, it must be from the amnion and not the cord. That's number one. So there are people that harvest exosomes from the cord. That will not do. It will have to be amnion. And that's different from the stem cells because you could harvest the stem cells from both. Exactly. No, I'm talking about the exosomes. Number two, it cannot be um, exosomes alone. It must be the entire, I'll use the word, soup. In other words, in the amnion fluid itself are just hundreds and thousands of cytokines and, and chemokines and growth factors, and all of these in harmony produce an environment that's inconsistent with the life of COVID-19 virus. So you must harvest the entire soup. And Organicell is the only company that harvests the entire soup. The next component is an absolute must. All other companies, once they take their exosomes alone, by the way, they then store them in DMSO. This is incorrect. This is inappropriate. This will end up killing um, any of the active and alive components of the amnion fluid. And in so doing, you can't use DMSO as a preservative. And Organicell does not. So I think that's another criteria that better be brought to the attention of the consumer. And then finally, um, the product must be filtered and not cultured. Because the majority of companies, they go ahead and harvest the exosomes alone, and then they culture and plate them and expand them. This leads to a very weakened form of exosomes, 
with no additional amniotic fluid and consequently, I believe, no ability to render the virus harmless. So it's a unique product that is in a unique set of times that is now applying for that emergency use authorization. I believe that authorization is forthcoming. I actually believe it's forthcoming this week. And if it is, I'll be the first to report it to you so that you can bring your listeners to that understanding that the FDA would have been so impressed that they also, too, are seeing the need to bring it to the to the medical world to allow people to take charge and do something more than sitting in a room and keeping their hands washed. Absolutely. We'll be talking. I'll be talking with you this week to see when you have that update, and then we'll certainly get you on air to talk about that. It, what it sounds like to me, Dr. Courtney, is this procedure, this amnion matrix over here, is preventing a protein from invading our cells. Is that what's happening here? Yes, because a virus is a protein that's surrounded by a bilipid layer, and the amnion environment cuts through the bilipid layer and renders the protein useless and unpenetrable, and that's how you rid yourself of the virus. Awesome. And in that amnion environment, this is an environment that will not allow COVID-19 to exist in any form. Pretty powerful fact to know, yet no one's mentioning it on any of the TV uh uh, conferences that I see, yeah, I believe it needs to be met. Hopefully we're doing it here. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. We need to take a commercial break here. We'll be back with Dr. Dennis Courtney. There is a solution to your health challenge and one that will allow you to avoid both surgery and prescription medications. Take the time to find out more about the fascinating and miraculous world of stem cells. You are invited to attend a free seminar. Reserve your seat now by calling 724-888-3088. That's 724-888-3088. 3088. Become empowered with Dr. Courtney. Call today, 724-888-3088. Tell them Dr. Ed sent you. We're back at Healthy Pets, Healthy People with Dr. Dennis Courtney talking about the importance of treating this COVID-19. Dr. Courtney, explain to us how this virus enters into the cell. You say the virus isn't alive. We know that. But it does impact our cells and is a host cell. Explain that policy to procedure, procedure to us. Well, of course, the COVID-19, I think we've all seen a picture of it on TV. It's like this round ball with a bunch of spikes on it. Do you know the picture I'm talking about, yes. Dr. Ed? Yes. And so those spikes literally allow the virus to penetrate through the mucosal membranes, of especially the nose. And in the elderly, there you'll see appear to have a greater vulnerability to the mucous membranes of their anterior nose. And those spikes enter the, the, um, the, the nose and puncture and punctate through the mucosal membrane. And once inside of it, then it allows it to flourish and to take over your DNA excuse me, your RNA, because remember, this is the RNA and uh, an RNA virus, take it over and start replicating and multiplying at rates that can overcome and overwhelm the patient. So it's those spikes that need to be deactivated. And I believe uh, when you finally get past the bilipid layer, that's how you destroy the protein. And that's what things like vitamin C actually does, and that's what things like this COVID, or excuse me, this um, amnion matrix, nanomatrix, also does. The soap washing deals with killing, not killing, but um, eliminating the lipid membrane. It's a fact. And so hand washing is an excellent way to prevent this virus from uh, causing problems in us because by taking away the bilipid layer, you rendered the virus helpless. Well, other things work on the actual protein. That's where vitamin C comes in with its peroxide, and that's where this uh, nano matrix, amniotic nano matrix, ultimately does what it does on the actual virus itself, not on the membrane. So, how how available is this uh, nano matrix? 
Is it, is it easily gotten a hold of it, or is there going to be a run on that and a shortage of that as well? Well, right now, I'm only aware of one company that harvests the nano matrix in its entirety. And so there will probably be other companies that attempt to do this. But as of right now, it's pretty easy to answer the question. They went and they did the research. They made the application to the FDA. The FDA, when it finally approves of this, is only going to approve it with the one company for now. Who's to say a year from now what other companies may be involved? But the name of the company that our listener needs to check out is called Organicell. Go to Organicell.com. I believe you'll be seeing once FDA approves this EUA status, they'll have it plastered all over their uh, homepage. But I'm telling you now, I've been using that product for the last uh, at least seven to eight months. Many times I, I'd be infusing it. I just never realized it was so devastating to this COVID-19. This is the thing that caught us by surprise. And we only learned about this literally in the last 30 days. So, so this is brand new information. So, so if, if I had shown positive and I have the symptoms and all of that, I'm going to go to the hospital for that treatment. If I'm one in, in one of those groups or just for the safety factor that I want to avoid getting this virus, I could come to your office and have this procedure done? Exactly. Please. No one with a disease. I, I don't want them to come to my office. Get to a hospital. They'll be able to use this uh, through EUA to actually treat people who are active. Once, once it's able, approved. What, well, once it gets its EUA status. Yeah. So EUA is going to allow it to happen. I'm permitted outside of the hospital in the community environment to treat those who want to prophylax, who want to prevent the virus from ever taking a foothold in them. And when you talk about sitting around clean, keeping your hands clean versus actually doing something, this is the something. Combined with the vitamin C, uh, these are two powerful ways to intervene and prevent you from ever getting the virus. I believe this one, however, is going to be the most potent and powerful way of all. And we're just around the corner from getting that uh, FDA approval. But even if that doesn't come, I'm allowed, because I'm treating with it right now, I'm allowed to use the stuff. So it's available. You know... What I think people need to be aware of, and I'm supportive with what you're saying 100%. I mean, you know for a fact that I do these vitamin C protocols and so forth. It takes zinc, uh, uh, liposomal glutathione, all these things that we've talked about on the show. But, you know, there are 36 different coronaviruses out there. This, this is something that we've been exposed to. And when I've done some research and some studying on this, and it, some of these tests that are that are being done where people are showing positive for coronavirus doesn't necessarily mean they're showing positive for the coronavirus 19. And then these people that are dying in hospitals that may be showing positive are being collectively put into a death toll. And they could have died from a heart problem or from cancer or something else. So there's a lot of issues going on here that we need to deal with. So the best way to deal with all of this is a preventative issue. I believe so. Um, it's now available, now that our listeners know about it, it's available to them. I would uh, refer all of them, anybody listening to us today, head to my website. We're all four part. We've done four shows now, Ed. All four are on the opening page of my website um, under the COVID-19 banner. And for those who want to find out more, there's the place to go. Yeah, and absolutely. Give, give that. Uh, again, it's CourtneyMedical.com. Yes, CourtneyMedical.com. Uh, opening page, it says uh, COVID-19 prevention, parts one through. And by this afternoon, part four will be put up so that this show will be able to be listened to. And Anytime you want, folks. And I'm getting a thumbs up from Gary on that one, my producer, Gary. He will get that to you today. And, uh, Thank you. And I think it's important for you to even I, – I know you do this. You'll have a consult over the phone for anybody that's interested in coming in and doing this prophylactically, whether yes, it be the, and the phone. Wh whether it be v a vitamin C or, or the exosomes. 
Sure. The phone number at the office, by the way, 724-942-3002. Dr. Courtney, I appreciate you coming back on. and You've given so much of your time to educate our audience on what's going on in the world today. You know, I, I have a, a little bit different perspective on this, uh, and I, I have to control myself on getting out there because we're allowing this to take over our lives, and we shouldn't. And I see it as maybe a chance for this new world order to to get its grips in our lives, and we got to prevent whatever the case is that from happening or mandated vaccinations. So, I, so I, I look at this a little bit differently. Uh, I'm glad you're presenting what you're presenting and educating our people on how to prevent this from taking over their lives. You know, if you look at uh, Washington County, for example, Washington County had 66 confirmed cases and zero deaths. Allegheny County had 768 cases and 18 deaths. I still don't believe, in my personal opinion, this this is as destructive as the PR management. I mean, I should hire that PR company to, pr- to promote this show because they're doing a wonderful job of, of promoting this virus. Hey, that's that's another editorial from Dr. Ed. You know, just uh, just a little food for thought. Another day. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Dr. Courtney, you stay well, and thank you so much for informing us. I will be in touch this week because. Uh, because I don't know if we can do another show, uh, maybe, or we can have you come in and just give us updates, if that's okay with you. Because we, we've really monopolized your time here for the last uh, month or so. So I will be in touch I'll with you. Your, I'll keep your audience informed. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, and look at Dr. Courtney's website, med- CourtneyMedical.com. Lots of information on there. And you have the, the history of our shows here with Dr. Courtney for the last four weeks. Hey, happy Easter. Happy Passover. Stay well, stay healthy, educate yourself, look into more than what you're being told by the mass media. God bless. We'll talk to you next time on Healthy Pets, Healthy People. Again, thank you, Dr. Courtney.